Hey there, everyone. Today is another magical day at Walt Disney World. There's so many updates to share with you today, but Starbucks first. Starbucks first. Oh, the Main Street Philharmonic! Abrupt change, I know. It's a big change, but it feels so good to be vlogging again and making videos, just talking, walking around, where you can see my whole face. I am. Yeah, I'm excited. Now today's a pretty big day for me. I'm very excited to be here simply because there has been a major update. This is my first day visiting the Walt Disney World Resort with their updated mask policy. You may have already heard it. Masks are now optional everywhere outside. There's a few exceptions, we'll get to it. Outside, anywhere at Walt Disney World. All those parks and those resorts. I'm excited. Now this policy has to do with all areas around Walt Disney World where you're just walking around the park. Maybe you're just exploring or just taking pictures. Wherever you're walking around outside, not in line, not indoors, you can have your mask off. Now before we dive into all those details, I do want to remind you, you have the option to wear the mask anywhere, anytime on Disney property. This is not a requirement, you have to take the mask off. No, you can keep it on at all times. But the new policy is all about outdoors. If you're outside, standing by the castle, walking around the Polynesian beach, you can have your mask off. You do not have to have a drink in hand. You do not have to be sitting in a relaxation area. You can have your mask off. You can also leave it on, don't forget. So everybody has the choice now. But anywhere in line, going for food, in basically AC areas, which I think is really smart, you have to have your mask on. On the rides, in line for all the things that you might want to get, have to have the mask on. It's all about kind of, you know, the Florida heat. Think about that, the humidity, the heat, you can have the option now. Really, really excited about this update, and it allows us to kind of walk around and experience more of the magic. You can see my face, you can see how excited I am about all the things that we're going to experience together. I was walking on Main Street USA just a few moments ago, and you know, when I was walking around, I saw a mix. I saw a mix of guests who decided, opted to wear the mask, and those who opted to not wear the mask. I would say about 60% of the guests that I saw had the masks off, and 40% had the masks on. It varied from place to place, and that was would vary on the side of less masks. So 70% masks off, 30% masks on, and somewhere in between. Now with this change, we see cast members are still required to wear their masks. I would imagine that's probably gonna change soon for them too, not 100% sure, but every cast member that I've spoken to has been exceedingly friendly, as always, and I, I gotta tell you, it takes a second to remember to put your mask on after you take it off. I walked into Starbucks, didn't have it on, Cast member very friendly, reminded me, oh, mask on inside. Oh, yes, that's right. So, some, you know, just got to keep those things in mind. If you are used to wearing it, it can work the other way, too. So, it just takes getting used to. One strategy some guests are wearing is actually just kind of wearing their mask as the mask beard that we've been seeing, which is a great strategy. It's right there. It's available for you if you want to put it on real quick. I've been keeping mine in my pocket, but no matter what you do, you need to have one with you. You must have a mask with you at all times while walking around because if you go into a ride, you have to have it, right? They will not provide one at the ride. So make sure you have it with you at all times. The mask burning parties that I know many people were thinking about, not yet, we're not there yet. Soon, but not yet. Smelling all the scents again. I just like, as you walk by, I'm smelling the uh, Christmas shop here at Magic Kingdom. The scents of Disney. You could smell it a little bit through the mask, but it's so much better without. It really is. I'm, I'm, I'm loving the scents of Disney. Now, in celebration of this update, we're headed to Tom Sawyer Island. I love it. We haven't been in a little while, and they are indeed open. I see a lot of guests over there probably thinking the same thing. Let's do it. You can see there are other guests getting on board the there very special boat that takes you across from Tom Sawyer Island. It definitely varies. So I'm going to say... I'm gonna say 70% without masks at the moment, but again, varying quite a bit. There's a demo of another one of the updates. Transportation, you must wear a mask on all transportation options here at Walt Disney World. So that means on the uh, boats between Tom Sawyer Island. And I think in line here too. Yeah, I think so. So I think we have to, once you get in line for these things, even if they're outdoors, I'm 99% I'm sure of the policy, and I will reconfirm, but you have to have a mask on in line for anything. Outside. I believe that's it. Reconfirmed, yes indeed, with a very friendly cast member in line. And on the, the boat, you have to wear the mask. Once you're on the island, you can take it off. Walk around, explore, then back in line. And on the boat, you have to wear the mask. Okay, that's the update. We got it. We're on our way. Keep in mind though, this is not as, as direct heat as other areas as you're walking outside. I'm undercover right here. So wearing the mask isn't, you know, it's, it's fine. We, we, we've been used to it anyway, but it's much, much easier because it's much cooler. It, it's all about the heat in Florida and trying to 
work with that, I totally get it. So having the mask when it's not as hot, it just, it makes so much sense. Now here in the queue for Tom Sawyer Island, you can see they've got a uh, helm right here. This wheel is called a helm. They've got a lot of ship and boat equipment. They've got barrels, buckets, farmer's almanac with a thermometer reading just about 80 degrees. I would say it's probably a little warmer than that. And a special reward. It's funny, since that trip to Gatorland, USA, I'm far less afraid of the waterways here in Florida. Healthy respect for those creatures, no question. I'm looking forward to going back, but I don't know, before I would, like, wouldn't turn my back to the water, but now I'm feeling a little bit more confident. And with that first step, we are on land. So we can take our mask off and explore. It's been so long. Welcome, if you like dark caves, mystery and mines, and bottomless pits, now's your chance. Let's check it out here, Tom Sawyer Island. I say you can see so much on this. I can't do that forever. Here's, here's the map. It looks great. Let's check it out. All right, we're going up this way first. You can see there is a great windmill right up here. I love it, but here comes that cave. Should we check out the cave? We should check out the cave. A little crooked bridge over there, but let's check out the cave first. My goodness, my camera can see better than I can. Wow. To give you some perspective, it's actually, it's more difficult for me to see in here than it is for you, simply because I, <laughs> the camera lens is that good it's it's a good lens definitely is crooked in here nothing feels like it's up straight but you may recall from the past here's some of the gems you can see tough to see them right there from uh, within the mine i can only imagine that it's where a million diamonds shine now this section takes us from a larger cavern into a oh my gosh it's getting too small oh, oh my, am i gonna fit i don't know if i'm gonna fit oh my gosh okay barely i, I kind of have to duck my head here just a little bit yes indeed Ducked my head, but we made it, okay. Continuing on, there's the light at the end of the tunnel. Sunlight, <laughs> let's explore the rest of the island. Back outside, you can see the Liberty Bell making her way around, I love seeing that. We're gonna make our way all the way around towards that rickety bridge and so much more. Little crooked bridge, or this way. Let's go this way, I feel like I haven't gone this way in a long, long time. Sure enough, this dock is closed for now, but it looks like a great sitting area. Closed for now. We'll get, we'll get there. Do not worry, it's a very special cave. Here's another one. Oh my gosh, that is quite a cave here. Oh my gosh, you know, I don't think I've seen this one. Maybe ever? I'm gonna say ever. Wow. It keeps going, I feel like I'm in Indiana Jones with a temple. Oh, could be lava down there. Light at the end of the tunnel. Oh wait, is this a different exit? This is totally different. This is the exit. We, we went in the other way. This is the exit. It's right by the haunted mansion. So I don't think I've actually ever been in that cave in my entire life. I think it's been too scary for me, but I made it and it was great. And we're back and we're gonna cross this rickety bridge over here. Oh, maybe the barrel bridge. All right, barrel bridge, barrel bridge. Here we go. Now, when I was younger, my mom told me that I used to love running across this bridge. And I'm gonna try like a, a small jog now at 31 and see if, uh, see if I've still got it. Here we go, all right, here we go. I'm jogging. Hey, look, I still got it. I've still got it. Oh my gosh, okay, no, I, I, I had it, I had it. Now from time to time, this window right here is open. It's not frequent at all. It's actually kind of uncommon. Aunt Polly's, I think it's probably one of the least commonly open spots around Walt Disney World. I've never personally experienced, ever. That's how rare this is. Big question, will it come back? I, I don't know. I, I hope it does. I'd love to experience it. I've never experienced this before. Best time to, to catch it open. It's during like Christmas, week of Christmas. I, I would imagine sometimes in the summer, but I think like the super, super crowded Christmas, 4th of July, that's your best shot. Hopefully we see it reopen, fingers crossed. I love the music they play right here. Bluegrass, it's so great. You know, I, I'm trying to think of other places you could find that music, probably around Splash Mountain, but I love that bluegrass right around here as we're walking around. Enjoying Tom Sawyer Island. Take a look, paint this fence. They didn't finish. Oh, the story, of course, Tom and Becky. There's Huck Finn. Okay, now we're checking out the mill. Take a look, you can see it. I remember this one very clearly. You can see it all working right there with the power of water. Goes to show water has power and can sure enough turn these things. Imagine there'd be like a donkey down there. There'd be, this, this would be turning to kind of mash the grain. Yeah, sure enough, it's hard to notice him, but there's an owl up there just watching us. I would imagine 
He's probably there for more than one reason. Not only to entertain us and look at us, but to keep other creatures out of here. It's a common tactic I've seen before. Fake owl, even though that's even better. Like that's, that's for our, our benefit. But owl to scare other things so that they don't stick around. Very common. Okay, now we go up to Hickory Switch Hill. Now, in addition to all the fun things you can see here, the playground is here closed for now, but before you know it, I'm sure it'll be opening again. Small helm right there for your little explorer and another stairwell to head on down back to the dock. Check out this babbling brook right here. That's what I'm gonna call it. It goes underneath this bridge, down the mountain and underneath the other bridge, right down there. Such a beautiful location, Tom Sawyer Island. Don't wait as long as I did to visit. It's, it's super nice, super, super nice. Now, before we head on back, let's cross this bridge and see that fort. It has been quite a while since I've seen the fort, and I do wanna see it before Tom Sawyer Island closes for the evening. Look at this bridge. It has been so long since I've been on this bridge. Cinderella Castle, Haunted Mansion, so much you can see. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad and even Splash Mountain way back there. What a view. And here it is. Not well known if you don't know Disney Fort Longhorn. I love it on Tom Sawyer Island. Only one way to get to it. Oh my gosh. I was, as soon as I saw this, I'm like, wait, did I miss something? There's actually, hey, keep that fire hot now. Oh my gosh, there's horses. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's been, it's been years. It has been so many years since I've seen this for a long time. Wow. Escape tunnel. Watch your step. Oh, oh my gosh, that's, that's a deep tunnel. Let's check it out. Here we go, we're going down. Escape tunnel. Here we go. We're way down here. It's hard to see. It's very tight in here. We're going through. Down into the depths of the cave and I'm, oh my gosh, I, don't, ugh, I almost didn't fit through there. Going through, it is an extremely tight cave here. Just to say, ugh, very, <laughs> I, I know I can turn my shoulders but I got a backpack on. Ah, the life. Wow, that's a, that's a very tight squeeze. And there are other guests and they're having fun as you can hear. Wow, look at this and you're so close to the water on this side, just look at this. I, I, this is a part of Disney that's really not well known. I gotta spend more time coming out here, I really do. Because I love Tom Sawyer Island and finding new things here. Okay, we're gonna check out the rifle roost now. We're stepping in here. It's almost vertical as we make our way up these stairs. Oh my goodness. Just look at this amazing fort. You can see the rifle roost here. You can see the Liberty Bell. Oh my gosh, what an amazing place. Wait, we can go higher in the rifle roost? This way, you can actually see the rifle roost. There's even ammo right there, I love it. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. So this is where you defend the fort, just like that. 22 caliber, I would say. You have to reload like that, the old way. They're kind of combining this and the, uh, like that mechanism. There's even more, the second rifle roost, probably another rifle lookout. I love that, now we're making our way over here. Oh my gosh, there's that cannon post. Oh my gosh, this is, this is so, so cool. Wow, take a look at this. You can actually move the cannon just a little bit as you're protecting this hole. Truly an amazing place here. Really, really is. I have not spent enough time exploring this amazing Fort and Tom Sawyer Island. Sure enough, there's also restrooms here at the fort, so you have that access if you need it all the way out here. It's great. Last but not least, we've got the guardhouse and, uh, excuse me, guard. Oh, he's, he's, um, he's, he's out for the count. There's even a pipe in there. My goodness. Sure enough, you can see those chickens in there too. Missed them originally with those horses. I love it. We can take the escape tunnel out or we can just walk out standard way. I love how authentic Disney has made everything here. It's so cool. I think I have a 42 inch shoulder. So just to give you reference, I don't know if that helps at all. Oh my gosh, oh, oh, see, just like this. I just get stuck just, <laughs> just like that. Ooh, here we go. You see what I'm talking about? Oh my gosh, I, 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 I literally have to turn my shoulders like that in order to get out of some, some of these spots. Oh my gosh, all right, there we go, we made it. It's really, it's really, it's really cool. It's worth exploring. It is, I don't know why, I like it. Uh, feels like you're a, a kid again when you're you know walking through the tunnels there. It's so much fun. Check it out, there's the Liberty Bell going by as we say goodnight. Oh my gosh, what an amazing view right here. You got the Liberty Bell, hey everybody! And we're just standing out here having a wonderful time 
enjoying these amazing sights. So funny, there was a guest up there waving to me like, oh Michael, dive in, swim. <laughs> No, no, no. I'm very comfortable on this dry dock right here. Gotta love it. I've been watching Big Thunder Mountain Railroad with the train going around several times now. Now we're gonna make our way back. What an experience. All right, getting back in line for the raft across now. Mask goes back on. All shore, who's going to shore? We've made it back to Frontierland. Let's go check out more Disney fun. Off the raft now and off the mask comes. That's just how it works. So. You have those options, it's great to know. But again, transportation, waiting in line for anything, even outside, it's gotta be warned. That's the current policy. It is no doubt going to change again very soon, extremely soon. Now I wanted to walk over here to Aloha Isle just to reconfirm what I've been talking about. You're in line and you're outside, looks like you can, you can keep the mask off, apparently. But then when you're all the way up there at the counter, you've gotta have that mask on. That's my understanding. Again, I will link to all Disney's rules just in case they get updated here so that we know. But just so you know, they still have the barricades up there to, uh, to be used for Aloha Isle. Head into Memento Mori, mask again. So you're getting, you're getting the idea, right? Masks on, in line. I wanna make sure I got this the right way. Mask on in line and on rides and in stores. Uh, but otherwise, walking around, no mask. Okay, we got it. We're at the end. What's the next phase for changes coming soon to Disney. Next, I think we can expect to see Disney change how maybe some other outdoor things are done. For example, the um, Tom Sawyer Island, the little raft that takes us across, really good example of how I would imagine that will become one of the things that will be a mask-free experience next. That, that's, that's the next thing that will change. Time frame? No idea. No idea. No way to know. There's a lot of other factors that I don't know anything about. I'm just, you know, these are just my predictions here. The next thing should be like outdoor transportation maybe and probably some rides oh my gosh that is the coolest clock ever it's actually really large look at this there's my hand there's the clock really large 80 dollars and there's plenty of them right here they're really getting into that haunted mansion merchandise i love it the next question when is disney going to remove these barricades that separate guests from each other they were installed uh before everything opened i believe so that you know, guests would have that space between each other. It's at every attraction, not just Peter Pan, small world as well. You know, Disney's not in a rush. You know, you think about it, you think about those uh, barriers between, and you know, why take them down? I, you know, of course they will come down at some point and I'm looking forward to that day. But for now, leaving them up, I think makes sense for Disney, not only financially, but safety wise, right? It doesn't, not, it's not too much of an inconvenience. It's there for a little bit, probably be here for a while. That's my prediction. But it's one of those things that, Disney has to think about that financially. Do they want to take it down? Do they want to leave it up? When do they want to take it down? Later rather than sooner. I think that's the policy on the barricades. One of the things that I think it's easy to say is going to be here to stay is mobile order and pay and pick up. It's, it's been so helpful. It's been amazingly helpful. I love the system. Love how Disney has laid it out like that, where you can even customize things that you want on your phone and you're set to go. And you can basically put everything into the phone while you're doing something like on a bus or a monorail. Click, I'm here when you get here and they're all ready to go. You don't have to decide. You can make those decisions in advance. It just makes the Disney trip more efficient, more fun. So what's the next change? The next policy update we're likely going to see. And again, I can't know for sure. These are just my predictions. But what's the next change we're likely going to see when it comes to masks and all of this at Disney. One ride in particular comes to mind for me as I think about what might be coming next, the Tomorrowland Transit Authority People Mover. The People Mover is an amazing experience. You know how much I love it. It's one of the attractions that just makes me think about when this policy will change on attractions. So when we're out and about, we can have them off, but on attractions, still have to have them on, no matter how far apart we are, no matter you know where we're going, no matter if the whole thing is outside, masks have to stay on at this point. I think this is one of the policy updates that Disney is likely going to change sooner rather than later. You can see, actually, they've made a small change to the policy already. They're putting guests right next to each other now. So you don't have to just have a car between you and the next guest, you're right next to the guest who's there. They're filling every single car, which I don't think is a bad thing. Meeting a friend, Darcy here. Check out her bag, custom made. That is absolutely amazing. Whole thing designed for Disney. So, so cool. Darcy, thanks for showing me. Now we know that forms of transportation do require masks. Monorail, bus, Skyliner. 
Uh, the boat, I think so too. We're gonna find out together. Reconfirmed, sure enough, on the boats and every form of transportation, mask has to be on. I just, I wanted to just double check it. I did, very kind Captain Paul said, yes, gotta have it on all transportation options. Cast members, by the way, best ever, truly make the magic happen. Now we're headed off to the Polynesia. Of course, we have a multitude of questions about what could be changing very, very soon, because you know that once this policy change is made, other changes are right around the corner. The next one that comes to my mind, it involves food. You know I love dining at Disney. I love it, and there are a few spots that are still closed that I hope open soon. One of those spots is Trader Sam's Grog Grotto. Oh, I'm so excited for it to open back up. But there's another spot here at the Poly that I'm excited about. The spot that I'm really excited about, the spot that I'm very hopeful opens extremely soon. I'm thinking summer, like midsummer, early summer. Is that too hopeful? Maybe. This restaurant, one of my all time favorites at Disney, Ohana. Take a look in Ohana, still closed at the moment. But are those, is that glass, like plastic, around the fire so that it protects guests? Maybe, I don't know, maybe it protects the cooks. Maybe they're getting ready. They got the sign up right there where it says the other table right there. For your safety, this table not available. Maybe that means we're on our way. I don't know, but I'm excited. I think that this, this could be as early as June or July. That's my hope. My thought about Ohana revolves around the monorail because the monorail is actually coming along super fast. The station, monorail's running. Station is not done yet, but should be done soon, summer? We don't know exactly. Soon, hopefully, we'll be done and we'll be able to make it from Magic Kingdom to here, and then at that point, it makes sense to open Ohana. Fingers crossed, summer 2021. That's my hope and prediction, kind of prediction at the moment. Here at the Polynesian, we can't be without an amazing Dole Whip. And the Dole Whip cup, you recall, is less calories than the float. I think it's like, I wanna say 80 calories in the Dole Whip cup? Not bad, not bad at all. I wish calories didn't count, but when you live here, calories count, so I'm gonna enjoy it. Just as delicious as always, I love it. I cannot get enough of the Dole Whip. If you've never had it before, Make it a high, high, high priority on your Disney trip. Right next to Pineapple Lanai and outside of Captain Cook's, this wall is still here. It's about the same size we saw it last time, but I do want to mention it because it is rather large when you're visiting. Masks are off at Walt Disney World. It is a really good feeling. It really is. You know, we're all following the guidance as it's been laid out, but it does feel good to take that mask off, especially in the heat of the day. And just like that, our magical day has come to an end. Thanks so much for sharing in it with me. It was so much fun sharing it all with you. Until next time, have a magical day.